Okay, so here we are. It's happened. The Fed has raised the interest rates 50 basis points instead of 75. The last four rate hikes every 45 days or so, the effective federal funds rate is hiked and increased by the Federal Reserve on a meeting schedule. The last four have been 75 basis point rate hikes. This one that just happened, I'm recording this four minutes after the number dropped, was 50 basis points as opposed to 75 basis points. Here's why this is important. The effective federal funds rate and the CPI are the two most significant numbers to Bitcoin, global markets, geopolitics, the Biden administration, and Russia. And the reason is the effective federal funds rate is the single most powerful way that the Fed uses to manipulate the strength of the U.S. dollar. Now, why does the Fed want to do that? Two reasons. Number one, the Fed wants to combat inflation that was brought about by the pandemic. So they want to raise rates to bring down CPI and the inflation, especially considering we're going into a period where the global economy is going to become much more fractured. Globalization 1.0 is basically coming to an end. Global supply chains are being shaken up and destroyed by the imminent collapse of China and the complete turning off of the Russian supply chain. Two, the Federal Reserve wants to raise interest rates so that they can use those interest rates to curtail a recession that may start as a labor, as a labor market globally is shrinking over the next five years. And as, quite frankly, the entire world implodes upon itself from a globalized manufacturing point of view and also so that they can use those higher rates as stimulus should they need to strengthen the U.S. dollar at any point in the next two to five years to beat Russia. America is fighting in the war against Russia and you, between Russia and Ukraine. They're fighting it economically. They are fighting it by funding Ukraine because what NATO realizes that if, is that if Russia runs over Ukraine, they're going to get involved with NATO. And since Russia has proven to be an incompetent military, Russia will fail in a shooting war between NATO, which means that they will likely end up using nuclear weapons. And NATO does not want that to happen. So Russia and NATO both see the outcome of the Ukrainian war as existentially important to the survival of their civilizations. So that's why the Fed is raising rates so aggressively. They want to get inflation under control. They want to have a tool in their back pocket so that they can drop those rates to the floor the way they did in 08 so that they can combat a recession. And they also want to be able to maintain an extremely strong dollar so that they can use that strength in dollar to battle the Russians and the Chinese who are likely to implode on themselves in the next two to five years anyway for a variety of reasons. This is a major impact on Bitcoin because in an economy where you have an extremely strong dollar combined with geopolitical uncertainty, a lot of companies don't want to get into Bitcoin. They want to get into the dollar. They want to invest in American manufacturing. They want to invest in American petrochemical industries. They don't want to invest in Bitcoin right now. So this is a good thing for the short term that we've seen a 50 basis point rate hike and you're probably going to see the price jump as a result of it. But don't expect that this is going to be a continued thing. As the Federal Reserve continues hiking rates, the dollar is going to get stronger and stronger, and Bitcoin's value proposition is going to get weaker and weaker in the eyes of the multi-trillions of dollars that are sitting on the sidelines waiting to deploy somewhere. In an economy where the U.S. is even more king than it has been in the last 30 years, and the dollar is stronger than ever, you see much less of a reason for multinational conglomerates to invest in the risky asset called Bitcoin. So in the short term, this is good for Bitcoin. In the long term, the climate that we're moving into in the next two to three years is actually not so conducive to the development of Bitcoin's price, although the industry is continuing to march forward. It's a good thing for the price, but just understand that this climate is not exactly one that is conducive to an extremely strong Bitcoin. Go to the moon. Thank you very much for watching. Peace.